May the angels of the Lord watch over your homes and grant you a peaceful night and holy rest. Now go in peace. Shalom. It's you, Jesus the carpenter's son. Why are you still here? Ah, I know what you want. You have decided to set off again? <laughs> yes, I'm going to the River Jordan. I'm going to see John, the Baptist. Huh? 
You two. What's so special about this John the Baptist? Why does everyone want to go and see him? Not everyone. Only those who seek God's mercy. But is it really necessary to leave your home and synagogue? Do you need this John the Baptist in the waters of the Jordan to ask for God's mercy? Please, be patient, Rabbi. They say that meeting John the Baptist is like living a day of grace. <sighs> Maybe they're right. The ways of the Almighty are mysterious. Have a good journey, Jesus. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Let's go. I wonder who your master is. Why don't you stay here with me, where it's warm? It's a sign. I must go. Oh yes, I forgot I had a guest. You can go out and come in as much as you like. I'll be back soon. Andrew. 
They've been waiting for you since this morning. They have traveled for days to come and see you. There was a storm up there. It was difficult to come down without ending up in the bottom of a ravine. Hello, friend. What are you doing up here all by yourself? Never get rid of him now. <laughs> if he doesn't mind eating roots and locusts, he's welcome. After you've baptized us, what do you think we should do? He who has two tunics can start by giving one to someone who has none. And he who has food to eat can give it to someone without. No one gave us anything for free. Why should we do so? It'll prove that you have truly repented, you gluttons. You must repent of your sins. Who do you think you are to talk to us like that? The Messiah or something? No, I am not the Messiah. Are you Elijah then, or a new prophet? No, no. I am merely a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. But with whose authority do you speak? With whose authority do you baptize us? You are deaf and blind. Even if your eyes and ears are open, you do not see and you do not understand. I baptize you with water, but he who is coming is far more powerful than I am. Who is this person? Do you know him? I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Huh? With fire? What do you mean? What do you mean with fire? You'll understand when the time comes. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I am merely here to prepare the way. My days in the peace of the Lord. Cleanse me, Lord, of my sins. Have pity on me, Lord. I made my mother die of a broken heart. Have mercy, Lord. Cleanse me of my sins. Do you repent of your sins? I have sinned against the Lord and against my family. The Lord will have mercy on you. Repent and lead a new life. What are we going to do? Should we go up to him like the others? I have no intention whatsoever of giving someone my tunic or giving away all my possessions. Well, you don't have to let him know that, do you? If he baptizes us, we'll be saved. I don't know. Oh, come on, let's go. After all, it's only water. You brood of vipers! Who are you fooling? 
What made you think you could avoid the punishment which is near at hand? Why are you threatening us like that? After all, we too are sons of Abraham, like you. I assure you that God is capable of turning these stones into new sons of Abraham. He certainly doesn't need you. You hypocrites. Uh. That the axe is about to chop down those trees that do not bear fruit. <laughs> and every tree that does not bear fruit will be torn from the soil and thrown upon the fire. <laughs> Hey, what's the big hurry? There's a madman down there. He wants us to give half our possessions away, and he threatened to throw us onto the fire if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. It's John the Baptist. Today the Lord has truly blessed me. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. We must do God's will. My son, the beloved, my favor rests on you. What did John mean? Why didn't he want to baptize you? God speaks through the mouth of man, what he says is not always clear to us. But we eventually see the light. Who was that man you were afraid to baptize? I didn't know who he was. But God told me, you will see the Spirit descend and rest on a man and he will be the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Well? Well, I saw the Spirit descending on him, and I can declare that Jesus of Nazareth is the Son of God. Why didn't you follow him then? Because God sent me ahead to prepare the way for him. I am not the Messiah. He will play the important role, and I will have to step aside now. And what about us? We'll go and see if he really is who you say. The paths chosen for us by the Lord are not necessarily the same. Goodbye, my friends. Have you seen those five men who were here earlier? He can't have gone far. We'll find him. Are you 
coming back to Nazareth with us? I won't be coming with you tomorrow morning. The time has come for me to listen to my father. But where will you go? I'll go up to the desert of Judea. This is a time of silence and meditation. Do you want to think over John's words? He, he's left us. He's gone into the wilderness. We'll carry on looking for him then. At the age of 30, Jesus left his hometown of Nazareth in order to pursue and bring to completion the mission for which he was born. No sooner had he begun the long road before him than he met his cousin John, son of Elizabeth, sent by God to prepare the way for him and his mission. In fact, John preached the necessity of purification of all sin to the Israelites of Galilee. He asked everybody to repent and to be baptized in the waters of the Jordan, thereby washing away all sin and as a sign of recommitment to the law of Moses. This is why John is also called the Baptist. The word baptism comes from the Greek verb bapto, which means to immerse, wash, and purify. And the ritual used by John consists in the immersion of the person in water, accompanied by a prayer that God might accept the personal desire for purification. John and Jesus live in the same country, Palestine land which gave testimony and was even protagonist to the long history of the Hebrew people. With a surface area of 15,640 square kilometers, Palestine faces the Mediterranean Sea. Its length of 250 kilometers is comprised of the Hermon mountain range and the Negev desert. Its widest span from east to west is just over 65 kilometers. It was called the land of Canaan, inhabited by various Canaanite people before it was taken by the Hebrews under Joshua 1,200 years before the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. It was called the land of Israel when the 12 Hebrew tribes, descendants of Jacob, also known as Israel, settled there. At the time of the Romans, it was also commonly known as Palestine. For both Jews and Christians, Palestine is considered the Holy Land, since it contains a historical and geographical memory of the major events of which the Bible gives testimony. Palestine is made up of three principal territorial areas, the fertile and hilly Galilee of the north, the rocky and mountainous central area of Samaria, and to the south, Judea and the city of Jerusalem. The Jordan River is the most important river in Palestine. 320 kilometers long, it begins at the foot of Mount Hermon at an altitude of 150 meters, fed by modest tributaries. The Jordan reached Lake Huel, today a dry bed, 10 kilometers down from its source. After going through a narrow passage, the river pours into the Sea of Galilee, 212 meters below sea level. As the river leaves the sea to the south, it continues tortuously until finally reaching, 392 meters below sea level, the salty lake waters of the Dead Sea. 
Nurtured by the Jordan, the beautiful green hills of Galilee surround the Gennesaret Sea, which is itself surrounded by small villages and the towns where Jesus began to preach. <laughs> 